calling in from today? I'm just, well, I live in Kent, but I know this looks like I'm calling in from America or something snazzy like that. <laughs> like from a Tony Robbins, uh, yeah, <laughs> unleash the power within. I mean, it would be an American that would have that background, and I, I could say that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Evolve. <laughs> Don't forget the Evolve there. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I do apologise. Let's see, let's there. Uh, Take that off. Um, let's put, put a nice beach. There we go. <laughs> wow, that is something. <laughs> oh dear. Apologies, I'm on my partner's laptop, so uh, it's him with the funky okay. American background. <laughs> who have we got? Who have we got? We got uh, Lou, myself, Marina. Uh, Lou, are you? What's your I'll open, I'll just while we're waiting for any further people, what's the interest with the 200 hours? Where are you? Where are you with it? What Do you have any questions? Yeah, I mean, I'm really interested. I have spoken to you before about it, Jamie, actually, um, before Christmas. I remember. Yeah, I've spoken to Chloe. So, yeah, I'm just really interested in um, hearing if other people have questions. But also, I think one of my queries is the additional hours of practice that are required, how that works really, the extra classes you need to attend. Marina, why don't you answer that? So we, uh, as soon as this early bird pricing is over and we're kind of, kind of within the month of starting, we're going to suggest that people start getting their hours going. There are 27 extra hours required. Jamie and I have talked about this year uh, offering some of that. If we have a committed group of people that it works for, offering an additional practice throughout the week, you know, uh, one day during the week, so that it gives this opportunity for everyone needing those hours to capture those hours. And that would be virtual, that would be online. Mm -hmm. But that's something that we would decide based on if we can commit, you know, let's say if we have at least five to six students from the 200 that are like, I'm in, then one of us would would teach that. We would we would commit to doing that. In the past, what's happened is students just start getting their hours from other TYP teachers. We give them uh, people that are close to them in studios. Some people can even do remote online. We accept those as well, as long as the teacher signs off on it. And I will tell you that we do encourage you to finish it within a certain amount of time. But it's not everyone that finishes it by the time the 200 is up. But we do try to give you, there is like a stature of limitation because we don't want it to just be this thing that is looming and then never gets done. You know, we do. And um, another option is some students have then taken other courses where they use those hours to complete their 200. As long as the course is done with Jamie, it usually, they can put that towards their 200. Oh, okay. So like I know where I've met you, Lou. Ma you <laughs> rock it and you in masterclass in the pub. Yes. <laughs> so okay. I, may have, I may have asked you this these questions before, but I no, you haven't. haven't. Asked I'm you quite sure you have not asked me that <laughs> I was questions in the pub. <laughs> where are you located, Lou? I that remember you were you were north. Yeah, I'm over in Kent. Oh, that's not north. Yeah, so I, well, at the time I was staying in Watford. So, um, yeah, so I've got family in Watford, which is what I usually do. I stay in Watford and then I go and do classes in London because Kent, there isn't that much variety. So Kent, for example, there aren't any rocket classes at all. So um, my experience is Ashtanga and little bits of rocket but not, I haven't got a, a really steady rocket practice. So that was another of my queries in kind of um, how familiar do students need to be with the styles of yoga that you're teaching on the course? We pick it up from the beginning. Yeah. However, it's, it's not a question of, do you know the sequence? Do you know the styles? It's more a question of conditioning. When you come to the training, 
module one, you better be in the right condition to start a full primary. What does that mean? Well, if you get on your mat four or five times kind of consistently a week, and each time's up an hour plus, you'll you'll be in the condition that you'll be able to handle it. Mm-hmm. The in the years gone by, the trouble that people have had is when they haven't been practicing and they show up and then they get to get they get going with the primary. So if you're really just like warming yourself up, conditioning yourself with a regular practice. Everything will come together in terms of sequencing, in terms of um, teaching. I mean, it starts straight away. So you don't have to be, you don't have to be um, an expert on primary series, full primary classical series, Mysore or Rocket One or anything like that. We handle all of that for you. So, but just make sure you're on the mat. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're moving and breathing. It's just a, it's just an exercise thing, really. And it ha- it's it, in the past. It's been helpful to know, have reviewed the Sanskrit of perhaps standing postures. Just eyeballed it so it's not you don't feel like it's a language course when you start in the first one, two, or three modules. Yeah. You just know a few of the names, but that's the only thing you need to prepare for. Mm. To, to add to that, Lou, um, we also do send all the students beforehand kind of like a little welcome email that says, this is a little bit of the Sanskrit. It's an audio you can hear. It's uh, watch the Patabi Joyce video, practice to that. And, you know, if you've been going to classes, you've heard these terms, you've heard the words, you'll now start to really understand, you know, it'll, it'll make sense to you more. But we do send the Sanskrit mm for you to to start working through it so um about a month before we do send that out to everybody great great thank you and is there an essential reading list books that we have to um be reading alongside the course or any recommendations well again it makes sense to have reviewed the ashtanga practice manual by david swenson hatha yoga pradipika by, um, I think it's Swami Muktananda and the Yoga Sutras, Swami Satyananda. But those two texts, not really. They're to be reviewed as you go through. Mm. So there's not a lot of really, you need to really like um, read up before because you're going to be caught out in the first modules, no. We will reference them. I will reference the, those two texts, but it's not, we're not expecting you to have, because a lot of the, the course is experiential, meaning it's really done through not your ac- academe or through a, a sort of scholarly way, although it's helpful to have that background reading but most of the the quality teachers have the experience through their own body practice. And we encourage you not to over uh, uh, become over academic because while that's very useful in terms of your own personal transformation, just speaking at students from from academe, like the sutra this and the, you know, the Hatha yoga that people don't, absorb it in any way at all all they want to do is know how to do certain postures and practice and breathe and so forth yeah mm-hmm. so reading materials they are there we reference them there are homeworks it's not going to bury you in doing you know here of some courses that just bury you in assignments where you have to go into the text and you have to write an essay on this and an essay on that this is not the course for that. We're all very experiential. There's not enough time to get people writing from, you know, studying and reading and writing. It's all about experience. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, what the really goal. sets people up to be great teachers. And it's a tried and trusted, um, you know, all, you know, most, there are branches of yoga, jhana yoga that encourage 
the studies of the sutras and the and the scriptures and the Vedas, etc. But it's very much the way to teach. If you want to be a learn to be a yoga teacher and to really feel connected with your students, it has to come from a body experience, primarily. Marina, did you want to add something? Yeah, I was just going to add that, you know, uh, from day one, our focus is really getting you prepared to be able to stand in front of a room and teach a class. And that is not going to be taught by reading a book. Mm -hmm. That's going to be being in front of your peers, repeating, repeating over and over, listening to it again, doing it again. Um, so although the sutras and the, the Pradipika and all of these texts, they do help give context to some of the bigger learnings, this course, as, a, as it is a foundational course, is really about getting you to be able to teach an intelligent and, you know, really concise class that you feel confident about, mm -hmm. that you feel comfortable with, that your students are going to be happy with. Um, and, and that happens from day one. Thank you. It's very important that people understand that to be a great teacher, you've got to learn the ABC, and that takes time. To be a very solid teacher, you know, have to have a good, you have to have to have a very firm foundation, and then from there you can create from that. So we re it is really a foundation course. Mm. It really goes into the body. It goes into your teaching voice. It addresses issues of confidence and um, many, many things as we go into the chakras, but really on a teaching perspective, just about holding space, you know, being able to connect with your, your students, being able to live, deliver a class very um, succinctly, as Marina says, in terms of tempo, in terms of breath. These fundamentals have to be there first. They're, they're not there if they're loose or they're not really... Um, rooted you've got nothing to build on so this is um this is the way we approach the course banders breath condition sequencing comes organically um finding your voice connecting to aspects of the self as you teach and you'll see some students go ahead first of all and then you know other, other students are slower but it really just it's in a very and of course it's a group transformation experience so it's 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 about the teaching and about the personal transformation the individual is part of the group experience as well mm, thank you yeah it's that aspect you're not going to come out the same person lou <laughs> Good. You're not. You're going to go. <laughs> you're going to go through a. You're going to go through a spiritual car wash, right. and it's going to. You really will be. You'll be a come out. <laughs> you're you're kind of going to come out the other end. I'm like, what the hell was that? You'll never be the same again. Yeah. No one ever has been. Mm. And it's not like it's agonizing. Like we've got you on the rack. But it's like, you know, it is, it's a very, you know, the chakras, the sutras, the practice, it's, yeah, it's really, you know, we don't take this course lightly. It's, it's, it's a strong course. I know when that's what you're paying for, right? You want, you want, you want to, you want to transform. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't want more than more of the same, surely. People come to yoga and want to be a teacher because they want to transform. So that's the, that's the essence. We've got Lynn who's joined us. Lynn, are you, are you, are you listening in at least? Hi, Hello. Lynn. Yes. Hi, Lynn. Hello. I was getting set up. Yeah, I, I caught the last uh, five to 10 minutes. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Any questions about anything else? I mean, we'll just keep it very casual. There's just, there's, there's just a, a couple of us here, so we can really kind of make it very personal. Lynn, were you, um, uh, where are you based, Lynn, in I'm terms in of your location? Are you in London? Yeah. So I've just moved here actually about three months ago. 
Um, I've come mm-hmm. from Singapore, where I've lived most of my life. Okay. Yeah. I did actually have a question, actually, about the course. So um, mm-hmm. I understand from the prospectus that it's like an Ashtanga Vinyasa course, right? So I'm wondering um, how much um, Ashtanga as opposed to non-Ashtanga Vinyasa will that be? So in terms of the learning and in terms of uh, the teaching as well, will we be mostly focused on the Ashtanga sequences or will we also get to, say, create our own sequences which are not um, exactly the Ashtanga style but maybe inspired by it, for example? Well, like I said in the last question, it's very important that you've got the foundation solid. Mm-hmm. So to, to, to climb over that prematurely and go into creativity, mm-hmm. you know, the roots of your tree have to be very solid and grounded in terms of, let's just say, mm, the tools of the practice, the breath, the bandhas, vinyasa, you know, the sequence, uh, et cetera. So we mm-hmm. spend a lot of time on that initially in the course, and that's anchored into the primary series. On the last, say, module two and a half, two modules we go into rocket and when we go into rocket one we teach you why poses are arranged in rocket and how you can then utilize that intelligence to create your own sequencing it's okay. at that point probably module 5.5 that we go into okay Create your own vinyasa. It's actually where we start to talk about vinyasa and how and why vinyasa is is uh, what it is, what different mm-hmm. forms, and how it can be really taught well in terms of its creativity. In other words, putting more of your own creativity into the sequence and how it can also go terribly wrong because you're working with poses and the poses the way they're put together really does affect the energy of the body. So mm-hmm. you can you can tell someone who's got a bit of miles on the road can tell whether someone is an experienced vinyasa teacher and has this intuition and training and knowledge to, to, to put um, a vinyasa practice together. So that we don't go mad on the creativity in this course. That comes later. Mm-hmm. That'll come with mandala rocket courses on the upper levels. Got it. Okay, that's helpful. But we do start to plug you into, look, look at how Rocket is. Look at Vinyasa. Why is Rocket Mm -hmm. organized that way? We go through all the Rocket one sequence and you're instantly like, wow, this is very fluid. And primary series is very formulaic, as in right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, all the way down the line. Mm Mm-hmm. Rocket is right, 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 right. Vinyasa, mm-hmm. pincher, left, 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 left. So it mm-hmm. kind of, it's, it's arranged differently. And from there, you're like, okay, so actually I can, if I teach rocket, I can get creative. Or well, how? Well, don't unrocket the rocket because the rocket is very well put together and very uh, very intelligent. So a common mistake where people we used to say, teach a rocket one sequence if you want to and you're on your final um, class. And because they didn't have the experience, it used to be a mess. They used to go mad with their creativity. And, yeah. it wasn't, and it wasn't grounded and it wasn't under, firmly understood that there's a sort of process to the practice. Mm-hmm. practice. So we discourage that now and keep you in primary, as a modified primary for your final exam. And from there, um, you in, a lot of students go into rocket straight after the primary. Some okay. stay with primaries. A lot of people go straight into rocket. Some go rocket mandala. There's bags of creativity waiting from you, but only once you've learned your ABCs. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. Other, otherwise, you're all wobbly. You're all, you've, you've run before you can walk. Okay. I will add to that too, Lynn, that um, I don't know who you've been practicing with in Singapore or if you've practiced with some people in London, but 
really some of the most creative features that you're seeing now, maybe in London, these are all people that have this foundational base. They have to, like, you know, the, they, the, like Jamie was saying, you have to understand, you become like an architect and you need to understand why you have to put these pieces here. And if you change one piece, not gonna have the same result. And, you know, the more you understand the, okay, I have this like toolbox of different pieces and I can rearrange them in certain ways, but I need to be really confident and comfortable with all these individual pieces as they are. And, mm -hmm. and trust me, you know, in the beginning, you're going to be very, um, you're going to want something that is, this is what I got because it's, it's getting in front of a room and teaching people. It's really, um, it's really uh, useful to have a tool like, I got, I got modified primary in my back pocket. I know it. I got rocket one. These are sequences. I know it's tried and tested and I know it. And I know if I deliver it, my students will be happy. I'm mm -hmm. going to teach a good class. And then, you know, it starts, you start to play and, and, and have fun with it. But uh, it is very much one of the things that I think people think that people that are creative or creative teachers just kind of come out of the gate like that. It's like, no, no, no. I, I bet you can probably trace a lot of their learnings to a foundational experience yeah. that gave them that, you know, understanding for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that it makes sense to start from like the important foundations, fundamentals. So it's good to know. I think I was also curious with regard to uh, how much of that we will have to do in the course. Uh, so yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, this, but there's also a real, I mean, uh, Marina, I mean, I would say that the, the teaching part is half and the personal transformation part is half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever suggest, even though this is what people can visually or conceptually grasp as, oh, I'm going to come out being able to be this type of teacher. Yeah, but you're also going to come out having transformed emotionally and spiritually and 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 uh, personally in a huge way as a as as a person. So the two go together. Mm. Yeah, and I beyond that, I really can't find a north, further authentic way of describing how it changes you as a person. I mean, Marina, it just, it, it's because a lot of it is done through the chuckle work yeah, and the bonding and the difficulties and what comes up with the practice working with your own body um, as you, as part of a group. I think it's not, personal I'm not trying to scare you yeah. girls off, by the way, although <laughs> I, I do much prefer the approach of trying to making sure people are like wow this is this is uh this is a real game changer in 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 one's life yeah i do think the personal transformation bit which is such a big part of this it's probably what uh, people don't expect it's like the surprise but like jamie said we're not trying to shock anyone that very much affects your teaching you might think you're going to come out and you're going to be just like the favorite teacher you have in the studio. And yet this transformation is going to un unveil a version of yourself that you're not even aware of yet. And that's what's really beautiful is because you're teaching your style, your voice, all of that, your, what, you, what you believe in about the practice, why you do certain things a certain way. You'll understand it from a sense of not just experiencing it on the body, but how the whole process has transformed you, where you are now. So it really is this journey of that you come in because you yoga makes you feel something, and then you leave having a very deepened, having deepened your relationship with the practice because it has made you feel other things. It's opened up other things. So I would say in my own personal experience that the physical practice, although very important, obviously we want you to teach, it's just like a, just one little aspect 
in the bigger aspect, which is the transformational bit. This is a transformation experience. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm particularly drawn to, to um, you know, yoga people for that reason, the psychology side of it, the transformation, um, that that's really, really appealing to me because it just looks really interesting. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's really one of our, that's one of our hallmark mm. is to produce really top, top quality teachers, but also to open the door to them. This is, this is very much a healing process and not just this healing in terms of where you see it sort of showered around the internet. It's really like you're going into, you know, your mom and dad stuff going into your childhood stuff, you're going into your um, understanding how all the, your attachment, your uh, issues of codependence, your, your connection to your ancestry and your lineage, how you, your relationship to your own personal power, to your own, I mean, going up the chakras with your own personal truth and expression, this really starts to go into, and they're very strong field, collected fields of energy. So you will feel through the weekends, this is collective unconscious energy. So it's not just us in the room, it's resonating in fields of energy of, of human experience. This is why the chakra model is such a beautiful model. Um, and we've been, ever since we've been doing the foundation, we've been using the trucker model. And it's got more and more powerful the more experience we have. And I'm, I'm a, you know, a licensed psychologist and, and, and Dulce is a, you know, decades of shaman, shaman exp experience and Marina's done, she's done, God knows how much work Marina has done. <laughs> so we're all very into this part of the transformation, you know, so what one what one can relate to at the beginning of the journey is the tip of the iceberg and i think it's you know rather than not have people have being ambushed by what they're going to go through it's very important to talk, talk about it up front pretty much we're known to be they're like people say oh the yoga people you're the yoga school that makes you, makes you cry and we're like Mm, no but we 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 go we go we go deep in in the work and uh, that comes through as you teach can you imagine what happens when you're in front of a room and you're going into their energetic field through the body guiding us through breath and meditation and what comes up for your students and then they're looking at you you've taken me through this class i feel fear, guilt, shame, everything, my life. We prepare our teachers to be in a, to, ha to have the beginning part of the position to, in order to work through, through, uh, through that stuff with their students. So I would actually say this course is not only a teacher training, but it's also uh, a, you know, an introduction psychology to become a, a psychologist or to do your um, um, psychotherapy and so forth. Mm. But of course, you know, it's it's your we we train you first and foremost as, as yoga teachers it's powerful yoga teachers with a with a with a strong craft and that's where it begins so it's not all woo woo with us but it's really i mean the, the rewards are, are are amazing at the end but it's what you put in you get out so any other questions? Um, that I have you some might have? questions people sent in, Jamie. So if you girls, I'll let you girls go first, but I do have some questions people sent through that they wanted a answered. So we can just kind of talk those through, but I'll let you guys okay. go through your stuff. Uh, I do have one last question, actually. So I was wondering mm, with regard to the process of choosing a, a training program, for example, because I've been researching online and talking to people um, all over the world, basically. And I'm wondering if you have any advice with regard to what factors I should consider when making my decision, um, whether it's like uh, with regard to what country I wanna do the training in or which 
um, which school to go for. Um, do you have any thoughts on what makes the most sense in terms of considerations? Yeah, I would say know, know where you're at with yourself personally and know what you want. I could, mm -hmm. I could give you a shopping list of rubbish labels, oh, choose this and choose that. It's about you. Where are you and what do you want? And then where you're clear, am I ready for this type of training? Am I ready to go into, uh, into this type of process? Then pick a school that's going to support where you feel you're at mm. and what, you're, what you want to come out with as a craft in which to then go into teaching. So we prepare our teachers to come out and hit the ground running when mm. they finish as teachers. Connect into the TYP community, immediately pick up the the cover classes to get into the studios and they're off to the races. So, and then, I mean, of course you could say, I could say to you, make sure you've got all more decades of experience and, and, you know, and, you know, and so forth, but it, it doesn't matter. It always comes back to you and it always comes back to what you want in terms of your own, uh, job, which again is is uh, a little bit um, limited. Of course, it's very limited because you know it's only decided by the conscious mind as to what we think we want. What's actually waiting for us in terms of our journey will be come from the unconscious and, and universal consciousness as to what we need. Yeah. So. But where we've got to start somewhere. So know what's in your heart. What am I ready for? What do I want? To, what, do, what do I feel I'm ready for? And what do I want to, to come out with and start with when I finish? Um, mm -hmm. and, and then select a school that you can see that matches to what you want and what you feel, where you feel you're at. Maria, can you... Can you add to that at all? Yeah, I would say too, it's about resonance, right? You, there's going to be a school, a message or something that's going to really uh, hit a chord. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be something that maybe isn't on the obvious level, but there's something inside of you that's going to pull you towards this place. That's really what I feel. Um, and if you, if you listen to your intuition and your gut, you're gonna to go towards the teacher that's gonna give you the learnings you need and the teachings you need. And, um, but yeah, like Jamie said, it's, it's about you. This process is about you. So you can have a teacher that has all of these things. It's gonna be about you. I Thank think you. that's a better answer, Marina. I think it's a better <laughs> answer, Marina, because I mean, I, what I mean by that is go with a feeling, go yeah. with a strong feeling, this is the one, this is it, this is the why. Does something about that, that's what you should listen to. It's, you'll know it, it'll have that, that, that richness, that pull to it. If you're up in here analyzing, well, how long they've been doing this and da, 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 da. no, no, no. Go with a heart feeling. That's really uh, all you need, because the rest, So if you've got a feeling for it, go with that. Some people call it the gut. I like to call it the altar, the altar of the heart. Mm, okay. Thanks, guys. No problem. Okay, so questions? I'm going to throw some questions out here that people have asked, and maybe this is some things that you ladies have also thought of. Someone's asking, how can they fit this teacher training into their life? You know, obviously it's on the weekends, people have jobs and families and obligations. And what is a typical training day, training weekend look like for someone? Jamie, you want to answer? You want me to answer? What was the first part? How can they fit this teacher training into their life? And what is a typical 
weekend or uh, day in the training look like? You do the first part because I'll, I'll do the second part. <laughs> so fitting this into your life, I we are very aware that people have lives. If you could take away, you know, if you could go off for a month, you'd be doing this in India or wherever, you know, you we're, we're trying to be, we're modern contemporary people living in the real world, but wanting to do spiritual work. So we do um, try and work with people as much as we can, but we do ask for the dedication as much as, as possible, because this is a container that is building energy week after week after week. So it is important that the students that come to us are giving us their energy, their presence, and that's where we can take them on the journey. And that requires being present. Uh, obviously, there's people that talk to us about scenarios, things happen, people get sick, you know, it hap things happen. Uh, so we are able to work with you and we do help recuperate to a certain extent ours. Um, and then if it's really something that's kind of gotten out of control, then we say, you're going to have to come back and join us on the next round uh, because it's not fair to the student to the other students to the teachers to be in this limbo either you know uh, one of the things about this course is discipline it is one of the the things that i think is really setting a strong foundation for an excellent teacher commit give your all show up be disciplined we will work with you but we are really trying to set up mature self-responsible teachers. So we want people to be really committed. And if sometimes people will say to us, well, I can only make four out of the eight weekends. And we're like, this isn't the course for you. We can't, you know, it's not fair to the other guys that are showing up. No, even if you miss two week, two modules, where, exactly. where, yeah, we're clawing it back. Yeah. One, okay. Two is tough. We will see the difference at the end if you miss two. One we can cover. Yeah. Um, what's the weekend? Well, it's you know it starts at nine in the morning in the and we start usually with meditation and practice. Um, sometimes we start with a review and then we practice. We practice for a good solid two hours. Uh, people are in the zone and breathing. Um, very quickly, though, um, well, about halfway through, I'll start to incorporate teachers teaching even in the morning practice, mm -hmm. coming in at certain segments and picking it up in front of your colleagues to put into practice what you're learning. Then we have a break. We go and get, people go and get quickly something to uh, to munch on, a coffee. Then we're back in, and it's literally it's like philosophy, the chakra. Um, in the early modules, it's sequencing, uh, and it's another hour or two. Um, a group or partner work. It's different, but in chunks, it's the same. Then it's lunch, hour for lunch, and then we're back in. Very repetitious, the course, in the first module or two. Again, do it again. Okay. And we time, we, we, met, we get your tempo going. We get your, encourage your teaching voice. Then philosophy starts to go. We go into the sutras and we go into the history which I, you know, I'm a big fan, a history fan, and it's fascinating how, um, where yoga has come from in terms of its roots through shamanism and through um, the, you know, six classical Hindu school, schools of yoga. It's very interesting. And also Try the anatomy, get... Jamie. Huh? Anatomy, anatomy as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The anatomy, instantly we're teaching you functionally in this course, functionally. I have to make that very, very clear. Functional teaching, where we're teaching you about tension and compression of the joint, how this can be taught to address a target area, how you can vary it. We're moving away from rigid formulas of alignment 
where everybody tries to look the same, they won't because we're all different, different heights, different widths, everything. And I start to give you the bone structures that illustrate why we're all different. Why we have some people are compressed, why some people can go <clears throat> flat as a pancake in a forward fold with no compression through the hips. And why people are up like that. Just sort of reaching for their feet. So we go into that. Um, we go very much into, but I can't go too much in a foundation into the anatomy. I just give you highlights of the, the joint, the joint, um, the fundamental joint issues in the primary series. And, uh, and I touch into where people usually get injured. I do more than touch into, we go into it where, and this is what people will come towards you and say, I'm injured. I've got pain here. And I go into that in terms. So, so I will bring there's You've got an anatomy online anatomy course as part of the course, but I go into introducing you to the, the yin yoga anatomy formula, which is just basically gives you the, the muscles and the bones of the lower body and where the spine and connects to the pelvis and so forth. So we go into that. So you are familiar with, oh, there's a system to learn the anatomy in terms of how I'm going to teach for later courses. We can't go into too much because it's literally your head's going to explode. It feels like is too much information, but we drip feed you in and then this sets you up for, for more advanced courses. It's come from decades of experience from our own teaching and training and so forth. We've, we've polished it, seen where it's not, where it's, you know, it's not quite right or it needs to be tighter or it's, 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 it's too much or too little. So it's, it's really, it's been refined over the years. So, afternoon then we have an often we have a second practice to, to the day in the early modules less second practice in the day as we're into module three four or four five and six much more going through teaching and becoming much more preparing you to go and teach at a new final class and preparing you for to to, to finish the journey Um, so yeah, I mean, the, but the days are like mega, you'll be exhausted. Yeah. You'll be exhausted, but you'll be, you'll, you'll something takes over. So, uh, it's very, and it, and, and it's finishes at six 30 and people really bond in this, in this course, talk about bonding. It's like. It's, you know, to use a psychological term, trauma bonding. It breaks the mold and people come back together just in the nick of, the, just in the nick of time sometimes. And, so, and then with Pete, the students are struggling with the, you know, some people struggle. Some people really, it's very comfortable for them to be in front of the room. Some people are struggling. We work with them early on. We make sure everybody's really past or reach a certain level way before the, the last module. Yeah, to, to kind of uh, jump off of that, Jamie, someone asks, what is there a, an exam to pass? And what is the exam like? This is a very common question. Everyone wants to know about the final exam. Well, it's not really a final exam. Like you may, you may, have, you may have suffered in your life. It's not like that. It's basically an exam that you're really just putting together stuff that you've already done for the previous seven modules. So don't worry about the last exam. We have groomed you to that point way before. So when we're all sitting there like a, a, board, a board of, you know, People like the X Factor waiting to see if you can do an audition and so, no, no, no. 
We have worked with you all the way through. So we know even if people really have a meltdown and that we know who, what you, what, what you can do. So that the final exam is not a final exam. It happens gradually over the, uh, the, the course, over the modules. Yeah, I know some schools make you do like a written exam and all of these things, submit things. Like uh, like Jamie said in the beginning, this is a lot more, we're, we're seeing your progress as you go along. We know how much of the information, we know where you're at. So we know when to step in and, and support you so that it's not all riding on that very last day, like pass or fail. There's nothing like that, you know? Again, I think it's, uh, it comes back to it being a lot about dedication and commitment. The students that are committed, that are dedicated, that show up, they get through. There's, there's you know, I think, and so far as I've seen, the people that struggle are the ones that are kind of, they're not committed. They're not, they're not there. They're not ready. And, um, and then it will, it will show. Yeah, I mean, we don't let people go through if they're not ready. No. What? No. We make them do it again. But we've made sure that never really happens really as a final. That's, that's happened as a process, as part of the process. So over the years, we've refined it. So we're really reviewing people as they go along. So there's no final. We used to kind of say, no, you've got to do it again. But we don't let people, get, we don't certify people if they're, unless they're ready. So that, that certificate to teach is really va of value. We're not just a, a yoga school handing out certificates. No, we really put our reputation by, uh, behind our teachers. So we're not frightened of upsetting people, getting people all cross with us if they're not doing the work or they're not, you know, there's, there's, think there's blocks to their process. And we're trained and we know what's going on with people and so forth. So you're, you're, you're safe. What else? Um, I'll, I'll throw one in here that I've seen asked in the past. People are asking about uh, accreditation and what happens after you finish. So the Yoga People is accredited through the Yoga Alliance. Yes. Once you are certified, you can go on and you register yourself. We give you uh, enough information to understand how to register with the Yoga Alliance if that's the direction you want to go, how to get insurance how to start setting yourself up as a teacher. Yeah. You know, we, we don't want to just throw you to the wolves. It's very much like get on the Facebook group of the community, get involved with the other teachers that are teaching in your area and how to market yourself. We do understand that people are putting money out and they do want to have a return, you know, um, whatever that idea is for yourself of how to, share what you've learned because really that's what it comes down to you will be excited you'll have new information new knowledge and you'll you'll need a platform to share it a way to share it who how how do i start so we do also talk about that we do business of yoga and we do talk about setting yourself up what comes next we don't want anyone to feel like we're just trying to pump them out we, we want our teachers to be part of our community and be successful teachers Teaching a class, yoga as a business, marketing, cultural appropriation, all these woke subject matter has, has infiltrated into our course, but we don't go mad on that, but we definitely are not um, timid about uh, addressing how the yoga market and how the yoga community is shifting and changing and so forth. So we have other teachers that come in um, who are who are teaching in London, who are successful teachers uh, that come in and 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 teach segments as to what as to what you need to know as brand new graduates because they've been through the same process.
What more Any can we say? Questions? Yeah, I mean, I've got nothing else. We've kind of gone through it. You mentioned the final exam. Is that Ashtanga modified primary or is it the rocket one? No, don't touch rocket one on the final exam. <laughs> we tried that. <laughs> like I said to Lynn, too early, too soon. Mm -hmm. Some people can pull it off, but most people, no, no, no. Solid primary, uh, modified primary. Mm -hmm. So is that set or is that up to the student to devise um, what they want to include in that set? Theme? Well, to a degree, it's it's you can omit certain poses. Mm -hmm. um, it's on the, you know, the structure of the, the practice is, you know, warm up, yeah. standing, seated, closing. You've got license for creativity, pranayama, meditation, mm. certain poses that you want to in put in, you know. The, each segment has and it addresses certain aspects of, of uh, layers of the practice. So you, we teach you how to omit poses that you, do, you want to take out, include. That is part of what we go into with you, I think, on module four and five as you approach. But most, for the most part, Lou, people's classes are going to look similar. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's okay with us. The creativity will come from that solid foundation. It just will. But not before that sound, those root, the roots of your teaching tree are really solid and anchored. So yeah, we encourage creativity. And if you, and if when you do teach your, your end class and we say, well, you put in this, why did you do that? What was the thinking? What was the, what, what, what was your understanding as to, to select that? So we're really teaching people how to have purpose with arranging their class. So there is some creativity, but really it's modified primary. Can't go wrong with that. You can bang that out all day long public classes, no one can challenge you on your sequence in terms of you teaching and it being a well-organized class. Modified primaries comes from Larry Schultz, Rocket, Mysore. Um, so long, long lineage of great teachers behind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when uh, you know Jamie's talking about, we'll go through the modules where we start to help you understand why it's structured this way. A lot of the it becomes a dialogue. Well, what would you take out, and why? We do want the teacher, you as the teacher, to start to understand. Well, I can't just remove a pose because I don't personally love it. I mean, you can, but you need to know why you're doing it. You know, why are you adding or taking away? And when you do that, how does it change the rest of your sequence? So it is a lot about intelligence and really understanding that the sequence is a super intelligent sequence. It's beautifully designed. And if you are adding or omitting, it has to still have this intelligence behind it. And that's, that's what I think makes the best creative teachers too, if they're intelligently understanding a sequence, because that will transition to any type of teaching you do, rocket, mandala, yin, what, what are you trying to go for? What's your end goal? What do you want people to feel? And how do you get them there? Mm -hmm. Everyone goes through at the end because we work on it so, so much beforehand. Well, it's almost the hour. What do we, anything, have we got any other I've got nothing else that's come through. So uh -huh. if anybody has anything else, any other questions? Right. And we'll say the early bird ends on March 1st. Okay. You can do a payment plan of 12 months. So if, uh, if you want that, uh, Chloe helps set you up with that and we, we set that up for you. And um, yeah, and we're, we're here to support you throughout. And uh, about a month before we start, which will be right after the early bird, we'll send the material for you to start looking at the sequence, watching videos, listening to the Sanskrit, 
and encouraging you to start getting on your mat four or five times a week. Get those extra hours, the 27 extra hours. Start seeing teachers, TYP teachers, start getting in front of them. Or, you know, you could even do it online. We're okay with that, as long as it's a teacher that's come through the yoga people. Lynn, you wanted to have a class with me, didn't you? Yeah, I was curious, actually, because okay. for me, it's quite, uh, yeah, like what you say, right? The vibe is quite important. Yeah. So, like, getting to know what the, what the teacher's style is and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, for, I'm not teaching public classes at the moment. I just do teacher trainings. I mean, okay. Um, I do master classes, as, and I'm going to do more uh, teaching with the new studio mission, but it's going to be mm -hmm. after the fact. Why don't you contact me if you want to to me to arrange, and I will think further as to how I can teach with you in the room. I might be a way I could cover one of the TYP teachers um classes okay. yeah um, sure I, I will email you would that be the best way uh yeah it, it send me an email okay. and um i will talk to chloe about what the the best the most expeditious way of doing that so you can audition me <laughs> maybe <laughs> no, i'll pass no, no. My no, audition. it's not really auditioning it's more just like also getting to know you just in case like we end up spending eight weekends together <laughs> of course of course it's uh, like uh, it's a it's a hell of a journey of course i understand fully i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not implying that this is not a an appropriate aspect of your due diligence um it's just that i'm not teaching public classes at the moment that's, that's just okay. that's just the, the the reality of it. Send me an email, and we'll chat okay. it through. Okay, Lynn. Yeah. Lynn, who are you practicing with now? Are you practicing with any so, TYP yeah, teachers now? I've I've actually just moved to London. I'm not practicing. Uh -huh. I don't know if my teachers are TYP teachers, but I'm going to a uh, Yoga Haven. Uh, there is one in Richmond. I think they have another in Clapham. Okay. Um, yeah, I've done like a few intro trials in my last three months. So each intro trial is about a month each, right? So I was at Lumi Power Yoga and I was also at BYC Hot Yoga. Um, yeah, mostly in West London. So I don't know if the teachers are TYP teachers, but I'll definitely look uh, the TYP classes up and go for like some trials if possible. Yeah, we yeah, could give you like, a number of yeah, yeah. a short list of teachers. Please. Yes, please. Um, yeah. Which you could go and you could go and see their style and put them together, go to a couple mm -hmm. of classes that have, that that you can drop in on and that way you'd probably get a better more all-round because you'd be looking at the product, not just the yeah. Jamie Clark the personality, <laughs> the product of actually what's how people and and who've gone through the process. Okay. Again, I point you to the transformation piece that comes with TYP because mm -hmm. I, you know, we're trained, say I'm a psychotherapist, a trained spiritual counselor and so forth with a, a licensed practice. And so that a lot of that comes in, in the, the deeper work with the chakras. And so I don't know of any, uh, too many schools out there that do, that, uh, that have that background and, and have that as part of their, um, of their process yeah if that okay. if that's what you're ready for then this you should get that feeling and go with that yeah um, okay you know um yeah we can we can we can work something out lynn mm -hmm. so you thank okay? you okay yeah that's really helpful thank you Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, I guess we'll see you um, in the course of the future somewhere, somehow. I, I appreciate you coming online. I hope we've covered Thanks. the questions that are, that, that, are, um, that are important and relevant and uh, valid for people. And uh, let's keep chatting if you need to with, um, with us or the girls or Marina. And um, yeah, we're here to help. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank Thanks, you ladies. Very much. Thank you. All right. Take Bye. care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.